Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. Today I thought we'd take a look at the view menu. The view menu can be found up here on your uh, perspective camera view that you have by default when you open the Maya scene. Right here, the view menu. So I'm just going to click on this little hash mark line at the top to break off this menu as a uh, draggable menu that I can place in my UI. And we have all of our view menu options here. Now some of these will probably expand on in a more in-depth video because they have a lot of options and such. But I want to go over just kind of a overview of all these little things in here that are in the view menu that you may not be aware of. So the first one is simply select camera. Whenever you're working in your scene the camera that you're looking through has its own settings and attributes and stuff and you may even want to uh, set animation keyframes for the camera that you're looking through. If you click the select camera uh, menu item here, you will select the camera and you'll see it over here on the right. I have my perspective camera selected. You can see the translation XYZ, rotate XYZ, and so on, and all of the uh, camera settings for the camera that you're currently looking through. Then you have previous view and next view, which use the brackets as keyboard. Uh, shortcuts and what that simply means is whenever you rotate or move your camera if you use the bracket shortcut keys you will undo or redo camera motions so I'm not actually rotating with you know alt left mouse button like I normally would do I'm using the bracket keys to cycle back through the movements I've made so if you had a good camera angle but you need to move it to edit something, you can hit the bracket, the left bracket, or previous view to go back to that camera angle you liked. And then default view, to click that, you'll literally go back to the default view that your scene starts from. And then look at selection. We need something to select, so I'm just going to create a, a cube here. So I have my cube selected. If we look at selection, my camera angle changes to center my selected object in the view. Then there's frame all. If I were to have several objects in the scene, I'll just duplicate my cube and lay them around. Let's say I'm looking at this one. If I hit frame all, the camera zooms out to see all objects in the scene. If I hit frame selection, which is next, it literally zooms in the frame the selection in my uh, viewport. Look at selection and frame selection are slightly different. Where if I hit look at selection right now, nothing changes. If I select this one over here and look at selection, you'll notice I'm still the same distance away from it. My distance from the object hasn't changed, but if I hit frame selection, I zoom in really close. So I can see it really uh, close up. And the shortcut for that is F. Also, speaking of, if I were to switch to my four panel view which shows top front side and perspective views if I hit the F key in my perspective view up here you'll notice that it frames the selection like we just went over but if you hit shift F it'll frame it in all four views so keep that in mind if you're using multiple views if you hit shift F it'll frame in all uh, open views that are uh, in your viewport right now those are our first menu items. Next we have bookmarks. We have predefined bookmarks. And these are the bookmarks that Maya comes preloaded with. So if you ever have a strange camera angle and your grid's not active or something, and you're way over here on the far right, and your grid's like way over there in the back, back distance, predefined bookmarks perspective, and you'll literally snap back to the default perspective view. You can also go to front views, top and yeah this is also has this hashed line here I can break off this bookmark menu as its own menu to, uh, I can leave on in my UI top right left back bottom those are the predefined bookmarks and if I were to frame this object and because it's a cube it won't look much different but I'll just kind of change its shape slightly hopefully it'll make a difference if I go to front view. Now I'll, I'll also look at my selection here. Top view. There we go. 
right side, look at selection, left side, look at selection, you see the difference, back side, and then the bottom. And literally bottom is the opposite of top, you're looking at it from the bottom. And those, and some of these, you'll notice, are not part of your default four panel view. You have top, uh, front, and side, but you don't have right side or left side, you only have one of the sides. So if you want to look at it from the opposite side, that the default side uh, viewport gives you, you can use the other predefined bookmark. And then you don't have bottom, uh, a bottom viewport by default, you can use this predefined bookmark to look at the bottom if you need to. And then we have bookmarks. You can edit bookmarks. If I click this and I have a bookmark editor, and you can literally create a new camera bookmark for your scene and we'll probably have a video going over this at some point since there's a little bit more involved here but just know that this is here and whenever you do create a, a bookmark it will be added to the bookmarks list here we don't have anything here right now so we just have the edit bookmarks option but if you had something you would have a list here of all the bookmarks that you've created custom and now we have camera settings again we have a lot of stuff here that will go over in a video all on its own I think because it's pretty important for rendering but for the most part what you have are a lot of uh, camera settings that deal with rendering a scene like for animation and such uh, main probably most important ones would be like the gates right now we have no gate which is the uh, default selection if we change it to film gate you'll see let me move this over here we get this dotted line and any, anything that's outside that dotted line kind of becomes grayed out or shaded so this lets you know that whenever you render the scene anything this is this is the border of your renderable view anything outside in the shaded view will not be rendered and then you have resolution gate if you have a certain size resolution set up in your rendering settings Right now it's set to the default 640 by 480. You'll see that uh, listed here or shown here with the shaded that are anything outside that boundary is shaded like this. So it won't be rendered. So like I said, we'll get more into this, all these settings, safe action. You can kind of click these and see what they do. It gives you these all these different borders. Let's go back to film gate. And with safe action, safe title, if you're familiar with film, typically when you have like a logo on the screen or the title of the movie come up at the beginning, you'll want it within this safe title region. I, again, I can break this off too. If I uncheck that, you can see it go in and out. Because if you, if you have your title bleed all the way over to the edge, some formats may cut it off. Uh, depending on what you're look, dealing with, whether it be television or or film or whatever. So they have this safe title border and they have safe action. So everything within this border, I'm turn off safe title and just turn on and off safe action. So typically you don't want anything important happening in these margins because it could be unnoticed. So you, usually you want things focused toward the middle. And that's a safe action border. And then you have field charts and all kinds of stuff that you can look at uh, as you go, as you want. And I'll have a future video going over all these camera settings. Then camera attribute editor. I'll move this back over here. This is just a shortcut to open up the attribute editor of your camera. In my case, the perspective camera. So I could have some other objects selected, like this cube. And you'll see I'm looking at the cube's attribute editor. If I hit this button, and it'll switch to the camera, even though the cube is still selected. So I can get through all, all my camera controls here in the attribute editor. And then camera tools. We have lots of camera tools here that I'll probably go over in another video just, just for camera tools. But if you uh, notice, you like dolly tool, zoom tool, track tool, and you, and you have a lot of these tools kind of built into the default Maya camera controls. But these give you, cust like not custom, but specific tools for certain things if you're dealing with much more film qu uh, quality camera moves like a dolly and a roll like if I click the roll tool for example and 
left click and drag, you see I'm actually rotating my scene in a way that's not possible with the default Maya camera controls. And all these have options, like a roll tool for example. This doesn't have very many options, just roll scale, but some of these have more options than others. And like I said, we'll probably have a camera tools video going over all these options for all these different camera tools at some point in the future. And now you notice that my camera is kind of angled strangely and I I want to fix it but I can't that's where I can go back to my predefined bookmarks perspective and now my camera is back to normal image plane sorry if you hear my kids in the background they're kind of noisy <laughs> anyway image plane if you uh, you can import an image or a movie and actually have it show up in your scene as kind of a background pane that you can model against as a reference image or something of that nature and then view sequence time this is if you're dealing with uh, the camera sequencer which is a tool within Maya which can be found under window uh, animation editors camera sequencer it's this whole new not new but a different editor editor for sequencing cameras and this would be another whole video all on its own believe me uh, dealing with multiple cameras and such uh, but this uh, view sequence time kind of relates to that camera sequencer and dealing with different sequences, which I don't have any in the scene right now, so it doesn't won't really uh, can't really de uh, demo it. But look for the future in that video uh, where this will come into play. So that's kind of the gist of all these uh, the view menu, and again, this is found right here in your uh, perspective or whatever camera you're you're looking through the camera menus view. And hopefully that's been a little bit helpful. You can find some tools you maybe didn't know about within the camera tools section here. And again, like I said, we'll have videos going over the track tool and the zoom tool and dolly tool and so on as is uh, necessary in the future. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have any requests for future videos, please subscribe and like. I really appreciate all your comments and feedback. Uh, again, thanks for watching and I will talk to you later.